Warren Edwards Buffett, the guy who changed the way people think about stock market investing, is a living legend and a billionaire. When we look into Buffett's decision making throughout his career, what stocks to invest in and what stocks to refrain from, we found out that there are 10 important investments made by Buffett, which made him a billionaire and the most respected person in the world of investing. Even if you've watched some videos about Buffett and read a couple of books related to him before, this video might come as a surprise for you. For example, his investment in Apple for about $36 billion doesn't even appear on this list of the most important investments made by him. This is Five Star Finance, providing you with the best tips and tools so that you can achieve your financial freedom. Before jumping straight into what these investments are, first we will like to share what the criteria are for selecting the 10 most important companies Buffett invested his money. Now to avoid hindsight bias, we're going to present investments with good and bad outcomes. What matters is how committed Buffett was at the time of investing, or to put it simply, how convinced he was to make a purchase. So in other words, that also means a deal worth $10 million at a time when Buffett was worth just $100 million will be ranked higher than a deal of $20 million at a time when Buffett was worth more than $500 million. With that being said, the 10th most important investment ever made by Buffett is Disney. When we look at this historically, Buffett bought Disney in 1966 through his then existing investment partnership under the name Buffett Partnership Limited, or simply BPL. The partnership spent $4 million for about 5% of the company at a time when the market cap of Disney was $90 million and it had $11 million in earnings. He sold the shares after a year for 48 cents each, and this was a great 55% return. Buffett has been jokingly saying that this decision might seem a stroke of genius only if you exclude the fact that the stock is selling for $131 today. Buffett has revealed why he was interested so much in buying Disney at that time. Firstly, Buffett understood the recycling value of Disney's assets, and secondly, the movies would appeal to the new crop of kids every seven years or so. Next up, on number nine, we have the Washington Post. Well, we just moved straight from Mickey Mouse and Cinderella to newspapers. We have to move back to 1973, when Berkshire Hathaway bought a 9% stake in the Washington Post for a staggering $10.6 million. Interestingly, Buffett's stake in the company also indicated his then net worth, at that time, the Post was earning $9.7 million in 1972 and had a market cap of about $110 million. The price to earnings ratio, or the P-E of the company, was at 11 when Buffett purchased it. But the fact that most of Buffett's investments are based on stable business models, and over the last two decades a lot of newspapers were killed due to the rise of the internet, this is the reason Buffett sold the company in 2014 and the price at that point was $740 million. At number eight, we have Scott Fetzer. Scott Fetzer is a mixture of businesses, and at the time when Warren Buffett purchased it, the two largest operations were the World Book, an encyclopedia, and Kirby, primarily a manufacturer of vacuum cleaners. These two companies represented more than 50% of Scott Fetzer's earnings, and this investment shows that boredom arbitrage is a thing within the field of investing. The company was bought by Berkshire Hathaway on January 1, 1986 for a price of $315 million, and Buffett spent 10% of his net worth here. This is the first deal, not the last, where Buffett bought the entire business and not just a bunch of shares in the market. With $40.6 million in net earnings in 1984, the purchase was made at a P-E ratio of about 8. It is uncertain how great the profits of this deal have been, but we know that Scott Fetzer distributed $1 billion in dividends to Berkshire. Moving on, at seven, we have Associated Cotton Shops, a company of popular prized women's apparel stores. In 1967, diversified retailing bought the whole company for $4 million, which represented 11% of Buffett's net worth when you take his stake in diversified into account. Based on the company's net income in 1968, this deal was made at a P-E of 4. The results of the deal are not separately identifiable, but in 1979, Buffett mentioned that Ben Rosner at Associated Retail Stores continues to pull rabbits out of the hat, he said. Big rabbits from a small hat, year after year. He produces very large earnings relative to the capital employed. Buffett bought this company due to its price and because he liked the management a lot. But moreover, this investment highlights Buffett's preference for businesses with a high return on assets. At number six, we have the Illinois National Bank. This was an exceptionally run bank that Buffett purchased as Berkshire's second large investment. 
In 1969, he paid $18.9 million for about 100% of the shares when earnings before security losses 1969 were $2 million, meaning a P-E of 9.5. We are now approaching the really big deals that Buffett made, as this bank cost him a total of about 31% of his net worth after accounting for indirect purchases through his later increased ownership in Berkshire. And it proved to be a quite profitable investment too. Illinois National Bank and Trust had to be divested from Berkshire in 1980 due to the Bank Holding Company Act of 1969. Buffett decided to sell the bank to Berkshire shareholders by giving them the shares of the bank and then repurchasing a certain amount of Berkshire stock as their payment. Altogether, previous dividends and the sale price amounted to a return of 130%. But the return for Berkshire shareholders was probably higher than that as they received shares in Illinois National Bank and Trust in 1980 at a very low price. Buffett was sad that he had to sell this bank. Quote, However, you should be aware that we do not expect to be able to fully, or even in very large part, replace the earning power represented by the bank from the proceeds of the sale of the bank. At number 5, we have GEICO. GEICO was the United States' fourth largest auto insurer, with a market share of about 4% in 1976 when Buffett purchased the shares in the company for Berkshire. During the period 1976 to 1980, he accumulated 33% of the outstanding shares and the price tag was $47 million. The ownership increased to 50% through share repurchases done by GEICO up until 1996 when Berkshire bought the second half of the business for $2.3 billion. Yes, that's right. The first half cost him $47 million and the second half $2.3 billion. And Geico hasn't stopped performing since 1996 either. Today, it's the second largest auto insurance company in the US with a market share of approximately 14%. In 2019, Buffett explained that the underwriting profits from Geico since its purchase have totaled $15.5 billion pre-tax and that the float is currently $22.1 billion. Number 4. American Express You may know what American Express is today, but do you know what it was more than 50 years ago when Buffett first purchased it? It was primarily a seller of traveler's checks, which kind of fulfilled the same purpose as a credit card or an ATM does today when you are on vacation. You prepaid American Express in exchange for a check and you could then use it to get cash in a local currency or for paying merchants. It had also quite recently released its credit card and did this in a defensive move to protect its business from the potential threat of Diners Club. Buffett purchased 5% of the company for his partnership with BPL during the period 1964 to 1966. The cost was $13 million and that amounts to a staggering 43% of his then net worth. The investment had even reached the threshold for how much money Buffett would allow the partnership to have in single security, which was 40%. The holding was sold primarily in 1967, and although there's no official record of exactly how well this turned out, it turned out pretty well. We estimate that the return was somewhere in the region of 140%. Number 3. Seize Candies Seize Candies was and is a candy business selling premium chocolate. Buffett bought 99% of the company through blue chip stamps in 1972 to 1973. The total price was not $25 million like many other sources have reported, but $34.7 million as reported in Blue Chip Stamp's 1973 10K report. But the first 67% of the business did cost Buffett $25 million, and there's an interesting little story behind that. The family controlling C's wanted $30 million for the business, and Charlie rightly said it was worth that much, but I didn't want to pay any more than $25 million and wasn't all that enthusiastic even at that figure. A price that was three times net tangible assets made me gulp. My misguided caution could have scuttled a terrific purchase, but luckily the sellers decided to take our $25 million bid. Calculating the percentage of Buffett's net worth which was invested in this business involves a lot of assumptions as there are so many indirect purchases through increased ownership of blue chip stamps over the years. Buffett owned only a 19% interest in Blue Chip by the time of the first purchase in 1972, but this later increased to 46%. Simultaneously, Seas was rising in value because of its soaring revenues and profits. But I estimate that the first purchases represented some 18% of his net worth and the subsequent indirect purchases added up to 26%, which means 44% in total. At number 2, we have Blue Chip Stamps. As you already know by now, Buffett, together with Charlie Munger, used Blue Chip as an investment vehicle to acquire other businesses. 
Can you guess which characteristic it possessed that made it particularly useful for that? Let us know in the comments section below. That's right, Float. The trading stamps business was a marketing giveaway. When customers purchased something in a retail store, they were handed stamps to collect in little booklets. With enough stamps, they could redeem stuff from Blue Chip. Retailers paid Blue Chip for the stamps and then marked up their merchandise accordingly. Usually, it took some time before the stamps were redeemed though, and some customers forgot about their stamps or lost them. This meant that Blue Chip had large quantities of money that could be invested in the meantime while it waited for customers to redeem. In this way, the business reminded me a lot about insurance. In Buffett's own words in 1970, indeed, about 60 billion of our stamps were licked by savers, pasted into books, and taken to blue chip redemption stores. Our catalogue of rewards was 116 pages thick and chock full of tantalising items. When I was told that even brothels and mortuaries gave stamps to their patrons, I felt I had finally found a sure thing. Buffett bought shares of Blue Chip for himself, for BPL, for diversified retailing, and for Berkshire Hathaway, so calculating a total purchasing price is a bit problematic. Moreover, Blue Chip started buying other valuable businesses that we've already talked about on this list, like Seas Candies, Westco Financial, The Buffalo Evening News, etc. But we estimate that the purchases attributable to Blue Chip's core business, Stamps and Floats, had a price tag of approximately $26 million during the period 1968 to 1974. Finally, at number one, we have Berkshire Hathaway. In the early 60s, Berkshire Hathaway was a textile producer operating within a tough industry, but it had valuable assets. Buffett started to purchase the company in 1962 through BPL and originally planned to sell his holding back to those who were running the company. In his 2014 annual letter to Berkshire shareholders, Buffett explained the situation like this. On May 6, 1964, Berkshire Hathaway, then run by a man named Seabury Stanton, sent a letter to its shareholders offering to buy 225,000 shares of its stock for $11.375 per share. I had expected the letter. I was surprised by the price. Buffett had expected an offer of $11.5 per share, as this was the deal that he and Seabury had agreed upon beforehand. Instead of accepting the new bid and selling his interest in the business at a 1% lower price than initially agreed, Buffett got angry. Now he was going to take control of the business instead, so he kept buying shares. He later described this as a mistake. By April 1965, BPL owned 392,633 shares out of 1,017,547 then outstanding. And at an early May board meeting, we formally took control of the company. Berkshire Hathaway by far was the most important investment ever made by Buffett. But everything started with his ability to analyse different stock categories. After all, that is what separates the successful from the rest. This is the reason we have provided you guys with a free ebook in the comment section below, which will explain the six stock categories. Check out the video we handpicked for you, and we'll see you in the next one.